ओके सर कर basically we have to ensure recording and everything that is why sometimes it takes time okay yeah. yeah, recording shuru ho gaya ha 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 recording shuru ho gaya ye ha 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 क्या चल रहा है सर वो ही चीज तो बच्चा का इस बोलने से तो नीच और ये तो welcome back on this welcome back on this today we are having technical issues okay thank you so welcome back on this uh, fourth day of the one week online program and uh, we had two excellent <laughs> lectures in the first half those were delivered by professor mewako hosuda the foreign faculty now uh, if there is any quick question to professor mewako then i will request her to answer those questions participants can unmute themselves and tell if they have any question to professor mewako hosuda Do we have any question? Ali bhai. Hey, what na? Kedri kuma. Kedri kuma. Please don't do these things. You can unmute yourself to ask a specific question. Yes. Uh, may I ask a question, sir? Yes, please. Uh, so, madam had uh, mentioned that Taketoyu Township. which is uh, where salons have been put up and managed by volunteers my question to madam is uh, what kind of training was given to those volunteers who were uh, managing the salons and uh, uh, was there any uh, uh, structured training or manual given to them as to how to handle the management of those salons that that is my one question and i have another question let let her reply to this question professor miwa i uh, think you very much it is a very nice question you know even the volunteer they need to be you know try trained and get a uh, uh, certain information about the patient and elderly so they have the um actually i i don't know where about the particularly taketoyo town but in generally in doing a volunteer for the elderly and uh, the people with illness and disability uh, there are the, some uh, the you know that lecture course and uh, some there are no such you know certification but uh, they have some kind of training for example i know one group of peer support and uh they have some yeah the uh, the method of coaching uh lectures have you ever heard coaching coaching coaching, is, coaching uh coaching is developed in the united states and uh, it uh provided the uh, the how the the relationship how do and the people do the relationship with the vulnerable population and um kind of the people around how to listen the people's voice like uh, listening is very important 
not you know talk, just talk but uh, to listen to the you know the elderly people and people with disability is very important in the psychological way and the psychiatric way so people learn how to listen the people with a uh, disability or the elderly and also they learn uh, you know not to you know um, express their own their own experience too much. Yeah, sometimes people uh, make advice, and and for example, please eat it. It is very good for your health. Or please take this medicine. It is good for your health. However, it is prohibited. You know, this kind of recommendation uh, is only done by the medical professionals or professionals. So, um, you know, too much, you know, the volunteer does not, should not do to provide too much advice and to recommend the, by their own experience. So, uh, the volunteer learn this kind of things and uh, not to uh, so and listen to the people's voice and not to um, provide the sometimes uh, the very personal <laughs> recommendation. So yeah, as you say, volunteer has some of uh, the you know instruction before doing the volunteer. And the second one is what is what was that? Thank you, Madam. My Thank second you. second question was you had mentioned that uh, this through design how to avoid loneliness. Mm. Uh, yes. So th th how was uh, that uh, done because one is uh, designing can help in actually avoiding physical loneliness as well as mental or emotional kind of loneliness. So how was that uh, that thing done? It was very interesting to listen to that part too. Uh, yeah, there are many ways to make a person and uh, not to be the status of loneliness. Maybe it depends on the, uh, the area and the age and the the person's, you know, uh, the character characteristics. Someone uh, want to stay with somebody physically, but someone is comfortable to be alone physically, but to wish to, you know, connect with others, for example, online or emotionally. So. There are no, you know, the single solution, but uh, you have to communicate with the wrong the person in who is wrong, who is wrong, and listen to their voice and story, and then you will discuss what is a good way to not to feel lonely. And is it okay? understand? Yes, madam. Thank you, madam. You're welcome. And, that, and the story that you mentioned about Hatakeyam and the oysters was very, also very interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Miwako. Uh, Mr. Mundawali, Tej Mundawali, do you hear me? Tej? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Yeah. Do you want to make a presentation today? Uh, no, sir. Tomorrow? Sir, I have not yet made it, so I'm... You need to make it. Okay. Nobody uh, keeping a presentation ready. Everybody make it. Right, sir. 
So, sir, I will work on it. Uh, may, um, so prepare a presentation and present tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else who is prepared with his or her presentation today? I think uh, Farah Ashraf, she was willing to make a presentation yesterday, but could not due to some reasons. Are you here, Farah? No. Uh, Dr. Sambul Khande, are you here? Oh, I, I found the message from Farah. She is here, but not very well. okay. Oh, so you feel that not? Yeah. Please take care. Hmm. She is not well. She was not well. Parashap is here, but she is not well. Okay. Okay. No issue. That means we do not have any participant ready with a presentation today. Okay. Fine. If there is no participant willing to make a presentation, then I would like to invite some of the participants to say a few things, to share his or her observations, right? Is there any- Sir, I have, a, I have a question, sir. Right, 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 okay. Um, good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, actually, you talk uh, in one of your slides, you talk about informal social control, where you said teenagers or children using drugs, and if they have social capital, then they can be stopped from doing so. So don't you think it is because of their social capital that is uh, their connectivity with other children have left, led them to the addiction of such drugs? I mean to say that social capital is not only helping in preventing drug, drug abuse, but it is also promoting it. Do you think so? Yeah, that is so true. So that's why I proposed that uh, I I uh, made a present. So can I uh, share the screen again? So there are some uh, you know negative effect of social capital, and for. So this one. So in that case, uh, the, the, the children or teenager take some drug for tobacco. And if uh, you use a, you know, you, you, you know, say it is not good and stop it and it's not good to your health. So this kind of relation, we can see social capital. So this is kind of informal social control. But um, in the, uh, the other hand, so it, it is really good, but uh, sometimes um, oh, you, yeah. For example, uh, what is it? It's good. So, the children use uh, you know, the internet or some, or I, uh, some the IT device and the adults say the don't do this every day and uh, go out and play outside. However, uh, ch children who really want to learn the something from the internet, and in this case, so it can be the pressure of the children. And also, as you say, uh, the social capital, you know, for example, the, you know, the gang, gang, they also have their social capital inside their groups. So they have a very good human relation inside. However, their behavior is totally against the social norm. So in this case, social capital, you know, the strong social capital uh, creates uh, you know, the harmful consequence. So you have to be 
very careful to use uh, social capital. It has a positive aspect and negative aspect. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Very true, very true. So any other question? And also the social capital want sometimes the homogeneous society. If people really you want the the friend, you know, the friend at the who has the same value and same norm. So in this case, this um caused the uh, uh, the negative influence to the diversity, even if uh, the person is having uh you know the the value and the the way of thinking against you um you have it is better for you to include this person even if people are different from you try to understand and sometimes social capital you neglect the people who are not same far same you know same as you so in this case also you need to be cautious about uh, using a social chapter so this is my answer so any other question uh Dr. Tulika, are you present here? Yes, yes. Dr. Tulika? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes. Am I audible? Dr. Tulika, uh, Dr. Tulika, I would like to request you to say a few of your observations and say a uh, word of thanks to Professor Mivako Hosada. Right? Okay. Yeah. Our so behalf, on behalf me, of the uh, participants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give me five minutes. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. Anybody else who wants to share his or her own uh, feelings to Professor Miwako Hosada here? I'm sure there are many participants who are having sense of gratitude, but the only problem is this that they do not want to come forward to this formal platform. They have some kind of invitation and all these things. But anybody? Yeah, um, so thank you, uh, Professor um, uh, Akram, for giving me this opportunity to thanks, Professor Miwako. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Uh, yes, yes. You. Yes. So thank you very much, Professor Miwako, for this a wonderful session all four days. And actually, these were very enlightening, enlightening, especially, you know, starting with the background of comparing different kind of systems of health and how they are affecting uh, the health outcomes of the countries. And as well as um, I, I personally liked uh, today's lecture a lot in terms of role of social capital. So we have understood that, uh, you know, social capital is very important, not only in determining the health outcome, but also in terms of accessing the health services. And in fact, um, to, to add to what you just said, um, in, in case of India, you know, whenever people go uh, try to seek health care, they would just try to find a person, you know, a friend, a relative, who knows the doctor, you know, because we know that in health literature, doctors are our, you know, they take decision on our behalf. So, so we have to accept their decisions uh, for, for ourselves. And, and so that is where they have an agency role for the patient. And that's where these kind of social capital become very important, not only in terms of determining our own health outcome because of being member of certain group or not being member of certain group, but also in terms of accessing health services, because you go uh, to doctors or hospitals through these kind of recommendations. So still in case of India, uh, this is this uh, kind of role of social capital is very important in terms of accessing health services. So thank you very much for enlightening lecture. And I also liked uh, your, uh, your uh, you know, uh, lecture on experiences from Japan, US and other countries. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for, for, for sparing your time and uh, sharing your knowledge with us. 
Uh, uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to know and confirm it. So uh, in India, so even the patient who want to see and visit the doctor, they need some intro, some kind of the reference or introduction through the family or friends. So it's not a it's not an official. I mean, it's not an official requirement. But since since doctors are our decision makers, so most of the time, because of trust deficit and other things, people try to use their social network uh, mm -hmm. to approach before going to a doctor. You know, mm -hmm. like having a recommendation from a big person or having a friend, uh, because there are different kind of discrimination. So if you are from affluent, you know. So community or from affluent position, you will get better access to the health services. So even during Corona, we experienced when the public hospital were functioning. So normally in India, uh, rich people will would not go to public hospitals, but during Corona, since only public hospitals were fun functioning, so all the services were taken away, taken away by those influential people, mm -hmm. right? So in that sense, I'm saying social capital affects the access to health care. Oh. So it's a very, the, the informal network mm. that people use to go to doctor to find recommendations. Yeah. So, so in this case, I think social capital, you know, work, you know, expand the inequality of people. So of course, yes. Mm. Yes. So, so, I mean, when we think about social determinants of health, if you look at um, the caste wise access to health services. So my, my thesis was on access to health mm -hmm. services. And I have seen that people from uh, mm -hmm. uh, lower income group, people from poor communities, uh, scheduled tribes, scheduled costs, caste have low access to the health services, not just because they have less purchasing power, but also mm -hmm. because there are discrimination towards mm -hmm. them and they have less information. And they, yeah. of course, they cannot, they don't have awareness about health, so they cannot decide best for themselves. So therefore, that is where they die, try to go through a channel. We just try. It's very, uh, you know, decorous and, the, you know, a focus on the social inequality and aim to the you know, the equal, equal, and, and, and no discrimination. So, so in this case, what do you think? What can you do through the your research to make the equal community? I mean, uh, I mean, this. I don't think there's one answer, but I think. Um, uh, some of the actions uh, about making doctors accountable towards their towards the services they provide, uh, I think would be one first very important step, uh, is particularly in India. I see. So I told about the health social movement. Are there any kind of the social movement to make uh, the you know the equal access of doctors or? I think I know there's one in pharmaceutical, there's one forum, um, I don't remember the name at the top of my head, but there's one forum uh, who are talking about safe medicines and generic medicines, so, so that, you know, excess of medicines uh, is it's, it's even or, or is to everyone. But I don't remember, uh, I mean, I don't, I have not come across any forum which uh, who are trying to make uh, services very accessible. There are some group for cancer patients, though I know. Um, who try to you know build a community to help each other, but it, that is more of an emotional help, not in terms of service accessing the services. Yeah, yeah. I think you very. Uh, uh, prof Professor Miwako, uh, I would like to say a few things here. Actually, um, you are not much familiar with uh, the kind of uh, society that we are living in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Unfortunately, inequality stratification and exclusion, these existing uh, traditionally in this society in multiple formats, right? And that is why the Constitution of India becomes a very powerful intervention or tool. The Constitution, the preamble says that India is an inclusive society, it's a secular society, it's a sovereign along with socialist Republic 
right? All the democratic values are there in the preamble of the constitution. So our journey towards making India an inclusive society literally begins only after getting independence, that is in 1947. And since then, we have come to this stage that now at the formal level, at the policy level, we are having multiple interventions to make it an inclusive society. However, at some level, at the societal level, at the cultural level, at the level of the practices, the, the exclusion mode is still going on, right? So what we are witnessing is this, that on the one side, we are having the inclusive policies, practices, and at the same time, there are the remnants of the exclusion kind of things, right? So today, as of today, we are in a crossroad where some of the practices are basically inclusive, they're formal level, societal level, driven by the state. And at the same time, there are some of the practices which are actually by nature exclusionary, but these are still in practice. And those things are actually getting reflected in all the institutions. So whether that is an educational institution or it is a health institution, or for that matter, that may be the government machinery in itself, some sort of exclusionary practices are very much there. And that is why the goal of inclusive development is, 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 is a big thing for a country like us, right? So if you want to, if you ask any individual participant that of what kind of uh, intervention you want to make, it will not be possible for any of the individual to suggest because there are a list of suggestions. Actually, the entire constitution is a document to make India an inclusive society. So we can keep on talking about each and every article, everything, everything is basically intending to make India a more inclusive, more vibrant society, right? So this is what is happening. And yes, we can say as of now that because of some of the two, three important provisions, right? One is basically the protective discrimination, that is policy of reservation. The constitution has provided a policy of reservation in jobs, in educational institution to some of the vulnerable communities that is generally identified as the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, other backward classes kind of thing. And this present government has also made a very powerful policy intervention in terms of providing reservation to the economically weaker sections, right? So social inclusion, economic inclusion, these are the great policy imperatives, but simultaneously, because you cannot basically remove the culture from the society and the culture is not something that you develop in uh, 50 years, the culture is here uh, coming from uh, as a baggage for the hundreds or thousands or maybe 10,000 years. So we are living with that kind of baggage and that is getting reflected. Uh, I would like to say one more thing and that may sound strange to you. The inequality, the social or cultural inequality which is existing in the social cultural level is getting reflected in all the formal institutions. So within the healthcare system, you can find some kind of inequalities existing, right? Within the system, some kind of inequality is existing. And unfortunately, that the various medical system that we have, some kind of hierarchy is existing even within that, right? So, uh, but that, that is a different level discussion. Sociology is all about that. So we can talk about those things, but the, 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 the silver lining is this, that, as of now, the government as well as the society is making larger intervention. The civil society is coming forward. And that is why we are talking about social capital that how this social capital can help us in making some kind of improvement in our socio-cultural lives also. And how this can create more social cohesion. Because as I stated earlier, public health facilities are actually public goods. They're a non-divisive kind of things. And these needs to be shared. Like the street lamppost, the brightness coming from the street lamppost needs to be shared. That is a non-divisive one. Just like that, the public health services are non-divisive. Although some of those things are divisive also, but we need to share that thing. And that is not possible without having more social cohesion, 
and social capital in a positive way. And as you were pointing out, the negative sides of social capital, we have been witnessing that for from hundreds or other thousands of years. Because when you talk about caste inequality, then caste in itself is a social capital group, right? And within itself, it's a closed entity, right? So there are uh, very important striking features and the, the, basically the, the, the idea behind having this topic as a Gyan program was this, that, that through those people who are interested in this area <laughs> of research can develop some new thoughts. And I'm sure that, that uh, Dr. Tulika and some other participants have developed some new ideas and making a comparison with a developed country like Japan would have certainly given us a new insight, right? That is why we had those topics that the public health system in UK, public health system in US, then human development in Japan. Because sitting here, we wanted to have a kind of first-hand experience of people, right? So you shared those things brilliantly and we got benefited by those things. Uh, uh, we cannot say to what extent, perhaps the rest of life, we will remember the things shared by you or discussed by you, right? So thank you very much for sparing your time, your energy, your uh, preparing the slides and then remaining continuously engaged with us on this online platform. Uh, with these words, I say uh, again, thanks, gratitude. And yes, I would like to say that, that yes, on the formal platforms where we are engaged, uh, we will continue to remain engaged as of now, personally speaking, uh, for the participants, I would like to share here that I met Professor Mivako Hosada in Toronto during the World Congress, right? International Sociological Association. And in one of the, basically, she was the president of that RC. And in one of the sessions, uh, I was presiding and, and Mivako was making a presentation there. So this is how uh, we met. And then this, uh, this bond basically continued. And when I was offered to propose a Gyan course, then I thought of Professor Mivako Hosada. I requested her, she willingly agreed. Then I joined her in one another, another platform that is Asia Pacific Sociological Association. And that platform is available to all of you. Anybody interested can join. Uh, I'll sure, uh, Professor Mivako, please send me the link of the Asia Pacific association and I will share that in the group so, so that anybody interested can join that association. So this is how uh, I would like to say uh, gratitude to Professor Miwako and uh, uh, basically propose a vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's me to say thank you and uh, now, now, now before we close now I, like, I would like to introduce uh, my co-coordinator Dr. Swalihin. Uh, Hello, my audience. Yes. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, this First of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Mivako Hoseda for really enlightening lecture and the way you energetically literally delivered the content on social capital health is really uh, highly appreciable. And uh, we acknowledge that uh, you have delivered content regarding the social capital and health. And with the, the rich experience of yours in this research area of social capital and health, Literally, uh, I hope that the participant must be getting benefited out of the uh, series of lectures. So thank you very much, Professor uh, Mivako Hoseda for enlightening the participant and us regarding this. And this, this, this area somewhat become a research area for all of us and we all will evolve with this area of research. So um, hearty congratulations 
and uh, i am thankful on behalf of the department and on behalf of the uh, participants professor mebapa hoseta for your uh, enlightening and academic engagement thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you very much yeah i truly i truly appreciate uh, professor akram and all uh, participant to make this happen and so someday so I just to see what is going on after my presentation and I hope uh, my talk is helpful for you to think about uh, how to improve and also the intervene the and think and overview the current situation in India and world. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now, uh, unmute, please. Ah, we will continue. We will continue with the discussions of the day. Actually, we are sitting in the same room. That is why it is creating problem. Now, perhaps we can continue with the same set only. So now, uh, I would like to call a few names. Mr. Khande, uh, Dr. Sumbu Khande, are you here? Nuran Batol, are you here? Because uh, there are technical issues also. There are participants who are joining, but who are not visible. Tahzeeb, Tahzeeb, are you here? Yes, sir. Do you want to say something? You have written something. So would you like to say that? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to talk about my uh, research work, uh, which I'm uh, doing. Uh, yesterday, you made a presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you want to say something? You want to talk about something else? Okay. Okay. You please start. Um, so, basically, uh, what yesterday I told about my uh, research work was over medicalization. Actually, I'm working on uh, child delivery practices and medicalization. But uh, during my field work, what I have seen is uh, in some in some areas of pregnancy and childbirth, over medicalization has been seen. So uh, when yesterday I was presenting, I um, Professor Mivaku ma'am uh, said something, but I was unable to answer her. So basically, India is very different from Japan or other developed countries. So where intervention is needed only in case of complications. But uh, in case of India, what we have seen is without any medical uh, complications or need, uh, the surgeons or the medical facilities are performing unnecessary episiotomies, um, cesarean sections, and without any uh, diagnostic of um, you know uh, hemoglobin test, they are recommending uh, patients or the pregnant women from their first trimester, they are suggesting them to have uh, iron and folic acid tablets. Uh, that is, uh, this is very unregulated, which are resulting in uh, uh, resulting in uh, uh, stomach complications to that woman, and as a result, many women who in, who are in dire need of this uh, iron and folic acid, acid tablets, they are avoiding it uh, because uh, many other women uh, through their social and networking or through their social capital, they came to know that so uh, iron tablets are. Uh, you know, uh, creating problems like uh, the, if they will take this iron tablets, they, they will cause heavy weight of the, uh, the baby will gain weight. And many other women have said that uh, taking of iron tablets will make their baby darker. And this is some un unverified, uh, so un unverified things which uh, led women to avoid uh, taking of iron and folic acid tablets. So basically, uh, this uh, this uh, unregulated use of iron and folic acid tablets uh, is resulting in 
under medicalization in some areas of my research uh, area which is in uh, which uh, which i am do doing in uh, devaria district of uttar pradesh and in some cases over medicalization i have seen like um, in many uh, in the district hospital of devaria all the primary births are taking place uh, through episiotomies when there is no need of episiotomies a patient uh, the uh, nurses or the doctors are performing unnecessary episiotomies and if the if they uh, if we ask why they have performed they said no this is a prim primary birth so we need to perform uh, episiotomies without any medical intervention so what i have seen is this is and in private health facilities if i talk about private health facilities unnecessary uh, cesarean sections are performing if if you ask women why they have gone for serious cesarean section they will say like uh, the doctor have said the doctor have told me to perform cesarean section i don't know what birth complications i have i am what i am going through and uh, the doctors basically just for the sake of their profit they are uh, performing unnecessary cesarean section so uh, almost nine I, i can say that 99% of deliveries both in rural and urban areas are going through cesarean section which is a cause of over medicalization in pregnancy and childbirth so yeah today so so yeah it is really nice research so you make a inter interview of the yes yes i have done case studies through interview so maybe, uh, it's better for you to uh you know make another interview from the medical doctors you know mm -hmm. you need to two ways so two ways a uh, survey to figure out the you know the reality and the fact so you ask the the women who delivered and also uh, you had better to hear the the doctor of course 99% is too high percentage and i am so yeah i yes i am so surprised about this number but um maybe you had better to ask the, the doctor as well so if there are really there are no complication or so and for example in um, yeah it is really difficult to you know say the what is the medical outcome you know you know the medical the outcome of medical care and so yeah yeah sometimes of course iatrogenic uh, occurred and the over medicalization is indicated so but um yeah it's better to you know, to ready okay So thank you very much, Tazi, for sharing your research findings. Uh, uh, I went through a communication from uh, by WHO, and WHO says that up to fifteen, the prevalence of up to fifteen percent of cesarean section delivery could be justified or explained by the medical reasons. Right? That means the prevalence of up to fifteen percent of the cesarean section delivery. could be caused because of the medical reasons that means when any population is having a prevalence of more than 15% then these are not caused because of the medical reasons so there are definitely certain other reasons which are the non medical reasons now uh, one of my scholars basically conducted a study on this and then she found that there are several other reasons basically cesarean section is is a choice based uh some of delivery in uh, many pockets of india right sometimes it happens because that in the government facilities you have posting of very few number of doctors and there is not a, a, only one gynecologist is there in that healthcare system and she will not remain available during the evening hours or night hours so the doctor will say to the patient that okay i am here available from say 8 to 4 if your delivery is taking place in between then it is okay otherwise uh, i i will not come back so for going for a natural delivery 
some kind of medical assistance would be required and that facility may not become available. So sometimes people go for these reasons also. And then there are several cultural factors. Basically, we have written a one complete paper on that. I will share that paper with Professor Miwako. She is quite surprised to know, but I think there are 70, 80 participants over here. If you ask this question to any of the participants, that what is the prevalence of cesarean section delivery in your surrounding? And everybody will say that in the private hospital, this is up to 70%, 60%, 80%, 90% kind of thing. That has become a new norm. It is basically a delivery by choice. So this is a kind of a new, uh, I, I won't say medical prescription, but this has become a new kind of practice, right? So uh, we will not proceed further with this discussion. Now uh, we have Dr. Swalihin present here. He is the co-coordinator of this course and he will join me for the tutorials uh, today onwards. And uh, now I request Dr. Swalihi to share his views on the topic and especially related to social capital. And so that we can uh, continue with the discussion the, after the, his uh, observations. So Dr. Mohammed Swalihi, faculty member, Department of Sociology, Aligarh Muslim University. Thank you very much, Professor Mohammed Akram, for the very nice Am I audible now? Am I audible? Thank, thank you very much, Professor Akram, for giving me this opportunity to come up with my own ideas and observations regarding this uh, topic, social capital and health in India. There is a significant relationship between social health, social capital and health. And uh, we try to look into uh, the basic understanding of health and then we try to relate the concept of social capital to health. So health is a complete, as I'm just quoting the definition of WHO, that health is a complete physical, mental, and social well-being that cannot be conceived at the level of, simply at the level of the absence of disease or infirmity. So the uh, being a student of social science, so the most important part of health that uh, what I conceive is the social and the cultural part. Because the social and cultural part of health is somewhat having impact on the mental and physical health of an individual. And somewhat it is literally having the impact on the community health. So when uh, you literally being uh, having balanced emotions in the society, when you literally have well-adjusted uh, you know, equation in the society, so literally having your impact on the mental and the physical health, because the mental health is actually the product of the society. Mental health can be conceived as, uh, you know, that uh, social, socially adjusted or socially maladjusted person literally having. Am I audible? Okay. Am I audible? Sorry. 
Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can proceed, sir. Sorry for the interruption. There was a breakdown of the internet. So, discussing about that, how social health is literally having the impact on this, uh, mental and physical health. That uh, mental health, I conceive that I understand that it is actually uh, the uh, product of the social and uh, cultural health in itself. And here comes the social capital, right? And we need to understand that how social capital is crucial and instrumental in defining the uh, social health of an individual. Social uh, capital, literally, uh, uh, we can have the inserts of this concept of social capital in um, defined by Coleman in the book, The Foundation of Social Theory in 1990. He actually defined this course concept of social capital in a multifaceted way that there is not a single definition to define social capital. There are, uh, you know, the different dimension that needs to be included in the definition of social capital, right? So he, is, he, he literally just talk of that uh, some social characteristics are very important and which are common in defining, uh, you know, the social capital. One is at the social structure level and another is at the agency or social interaction level. So if you look at uh, this, the concept of social capital at the structure level and how literally that structure is actually being influenced with the agency and the uh, interaction between the individual. How with that interaction with the agency and the structure somewhat creating a sort of relationship and sort of, uh, you know, <clears throat> sort of uh, relationship, literally, which is really very important to define social capital. So he literally just taken two views and perspective to define social capital. One is uh, the uh, social cohesion is full of social capital and uh, where uh, the, uh, you know, the norms and values are very important, right? the norms and values to integrate the uh, to integrate the society and just maintaining the social order of the society and it is literally having some sort of influence over individual action and individual are being uh, you know compelled and supposed to behave in a certain way that because of the defined and standardized protocols of the society this is the school social cohesion school of uh, social capital where uh, I, I can give you uh, an example to make you understand this uh, social co cohesion school of uh, social capital. You know, that uh, if uh, there is in the neighborhood and the community, the people literally uh, are doing some constructive work regarding the uh, improvement of the sanitation. Somewhat they are more inclined towards for the development of the community. They literally voluntarily, voluntarily just submit themselves and coming on the platform where they literally think of the sanitation part of the community, think of the development part of the community and how to make community more, you know, <laughs> livable. So if any of the uh, individual literally not taking participation in such type of activity, so they literally, he or she somewhat having some compelling forces to be a part of that, right? He or she needs to be a part of that, uh, you know, voluntary, a uh, type of uh, work, constructive work that is being carried out in the neighborhood and the community. So this is cohesive uh, part of the uh, you know understanding of the social capital. Another way to define social capital is the network theory of social capital that actually define the concept in terms of the resources, right? The resources just like the social support, information channel, individual social network. Right. So this is can be defined in terms of the network that the people literally having in the society. This term is social capital, right? Capital is something which is having the exchange value, right? And social capital means that there is, there is some, some sort of uh, symbiotic and reciprocal type of relationship. The more you invest in the social relationship, the more you put your efforts to maintain the social relationship, the more you will have the uh, support system, right? The society in itself bounce back to you and literally uh, develop some sort of support system uh, to the individual and the community. So this is literally the investment of an individual on the social system on, on, on maintaining the social relationship, right? Because you need to connect with the different uh, persons. You need to connect to different uh, professionals. And the more you have the connection with the professionals, just like you're having the connection with professionals like lawyer, doctors, teachers, professors, you feel like more empowered in the society. Whenever there is a need of any type of problem, then you can 
go to uh, you know go to that person and accordingly you literally uh, having the values coming from that particular professional person how he just reflect upon uh, the problem and how he literally suggest you to to just have a particular sop to handle the particular social problem in the society so the more you are being connected the more you will be valuable in the society getting my point so if we if we need to develop this kind of understanding of the social the social capital i'm just quoting the coleman who literally just talk of social capital in the book um, the book uh, the foundation of social theory and here is the research part where we need to relate this understanding of social capital with health right because health is multi dimensional concept it is dynamic it is comprehensive term which encompasses the different dimensions of life right and that can be categorized in the physical mental and social well being so when literally people are being socially adjusted and people are uh, literally having their socially adjusted and socially enriched values that the individual is seeking out from the system the more he feel empowered to literally take decision right so this is the way that uh, we need to we need to connect the social capital as a, as an as an imbibe process of the social health and which is literally being culturally framed and need to look into that how it is literally creating uh, some sort of uh, impact on our uh, mental health suppose if you are stressful yeah you are frustrated you are you are literally having stress stress is a social product right some sort of uh, social influence you have on your consciousness and you feel like some burden right and then you cannot sleep all time you cannot uh, you you feel restless you cannot be mentally sound and when you are not mentally sound it is literally reflected in the physical problem right the psychosomatic type of uh, impact you will have in your body because even the immunity right immunity cannot simply be conceived in terms of the intake of nutrition even the immunity can also be defined in terms of you know some sort of connection that literally we have with the social system the more we are being connected the more literally we have our connection with the social system the more we can think of the support coming from the system coming from the social environment in which we are living so i'm just just talking of that if we are stressful we are being frustrated we are not mentally uh, you know sound so this is somewhat creating of impact negative force impact on our uh, physical health as well right so you you feel restless you cannot sleep all night you cannot think productive some sort of negative energy negative vibes you feel so it is just creating some negative impact even uh, even uh, if you understand the psychosomatic type of uh, the problem is the people literally having to so some kind of enzymes some kind of you know the uh, hormones literally being activated and stimulated in our body and that's literally creating long impact on our physical health so this is an integrated part that we need to look in that how social health is literally having impact on the uh, you know on the mental health and how mental health can be connected to the physical health because the concept in itself compounded and cumulative so here the part which literally we are focusing here in this session is the connection between the social capital and health right so the health of an individual is being related to the types of social capital and the investment that the individual literally having on the social relationship uh just take an example when someone falls sick right or maybe having some chronic disease or maybe there someone is uh, uh, having some sort of uh, need some sort of medical treatment or needs hospitalization so it is not actually the uh, question of accessibility or the availability over here the question is that how how much support that you are getting from the social relationship you need to have the bonding you need to have the social relationship to literally make uh, make the patient um, more adjustable just make and make a patient more mentally sound so that he or she can think of the betterment he or she can think of how to heal and how to recover uh, you know uh, recover from the trauma which literally he or she is facing during the medical healthcare right so some the, the sort of uh, uh, support literally coming from the relationship is 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 a kind of social medicine that literally the patient is having so to address the problem of trauma to address the problem of mental uh, you know tra trauma or having the mental instability because 
when someone is going for surgery and having some chronic disease, all of a sudden someone knows that he is suffering from cancer. So the mentally, uh, you know, burden uh, or the distress he or she is feeling that cannot be, uh, you know, simply be understood looking, in, look, looking into uh, uh, his or her condition. So they need the support of the society. They need the support of the community, not in terms of uh, simply the emotional support or the, some social support, even some sort of financial support as well. So if the patient literally having some sort of support coming from the society, right? So he has started feeling some, some sort of belongingness and literally started feeling positive. These positive vibes are very important, even for the boosting of immunity and for the, uh, you know, betterment and for the, uh, <clears throat> the treatment of that particular patient. So <clears throat> this way that we, uh, should I continue? Okay. So this way that we need to look into that the investment of an individual over the social relationship is literally uh, very crucial. It is, it is, the, it is uh, just like uh, developing some sort of system to an individual to go up the health problems in the society. So I think uh, that the participants need to frame the assignments on uh, the different uh, lectures that has been delivered in the different sessions. And I'm just simply providing this food for thought for the understanding of the participants so that they can include their own observation in the part in, in the assignments, right? Because this is a research area. This is a part of research where you need to think that how you can relate social capital with health. There are multiple dimensions. It is multifaceted, right? What aspect that you look into and how you are including your own observation that is very important, right? So you come up your own ideas and reflect upon your understanding regarding this concept of social capital and health and you draft your assignment. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Akram. And we will have a uh, continue uh, infraction in the coming days. So this is an invite to comment. If there is any comment. Uh, any participant would like to uh, come over here and uh, just having the comment regarding the sessions we are having. Any questions, any, any comment, any observation that you would like to, you know, reflect over here? See, this is uh, actually the program for the participants. You all need to take participation and come forward. Without having your reciprocal responses, how would we think of the improvement and think of to come up with new ideas in the coming session? If you have any question, queries, confusion, and you want to uh, come, come up with your observation, you're most welcome. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, mm. So uh, being a cancer caregiver itself a challenge, you know, uh, whether it is a family member or a uh, friend or uh, any relative. So uh, my question is that how caregiver maintain their own stress of both physically stress or psychological stress? When so very good question. For example, you know, care in. In India, also the caregiver should be cared. It is kind of, is really important, and there are some way to support the caregivers' mental health and uh, and depression. So that is one thing is kind of the peer support again. Uh, there are some other uh, caregivers association in the community, and the caregiver, you know, talk their you know, their worry and anxiety to each other and through uh, the mutual support yeah, uh, and caregiver, you know, get feels some well and uh, you keep their well-being. But uh, it is really important to support psychologically and mentally and also and it is needed to support physically. So, uh, for example, in Japan, uh, there are the system of home visiting nurse and home visiting occupational therapy and um, other physical therapy. So people use uh, the, such kind of the, uh, the, the social service social service and medical service. And as I see, uh, the, 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 you know, the insurance, long-term insurance covered home health service, like uh, 
cooking or cleaning and washing uh, the clothes. So uh, people use uh, to uh, reduce the burden of the caregivers by using the social service. Uh, so how, how about in India? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I had it is really difficult to get such kind of the, you know, the social service and, you know, the out of family service, it's sometimes expensive. But um, yeah, I hope, you know, in the future, such kind of system will be implemented to maintain the caregivers and the well-being. Thank you. Even I would like to uh, add my comment over here. When someone really gets to know about that he or she is suffering from cancer, this is something literally traumatized the uh, patient. Mentally, he becomes or he or she becomes unstable, right? And he was all the time just talking about the impact of the cancer. He, he or she feels like that this is the end of his or her life. So this is the negative energy he's literally having is ruling over her or his, uh, you know, uh, mind. And this is somewhat literally creating more adverse in, and impact on the physical health. So here comes the support of uh, the different institutions, just like religion, just like family, social relationships, right? The more literally you have invested on this, you know, the relationship, the more you will have the boosting system uh, that can support you. So here comes this uh, support system that comes from the family. They literally involve you. They make you console, make, you know, pacify you and just making you to take participation in other activities. So, so that you cannot think all the time about this, uh, you know, traumatized situation that it is going to lead to the end of the life. And if you take more constructive participation in the society, it is somewhat creating the positive impact on the immunity even. It is somewhat creating the fighting, uh, uh, you know, capacity of the patients to literally, literally think of that he can, um, he can be recovered from the cancer. And even uh, the different agencies literally having an important role to play over here and religion comes Religion is also literally having that impact, positive impact on uh, providing the consoling effect on the patients. So um, this is my own observation and idea regarding that. Anyone else who would like to? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, okay. sir. No one? We are expecting that the more participants come to uh, come with their problems and confusion and observation. So, thank you very much, Dr. Swalehin, for making a very comprehensive presentation and bringing in the social component of health, that is the social health part, right? So, very correctly, he pointed out the social dimensions of health that is generally identified as the social health and then try to relate it with the mental dimensions of health that is the mental health part. And uh, because we were talking about social capital, so this social capital dimension is very much linked with the social health discourses. So this is how these discussions basically move forward. This is how we reach to new discourses. This is how sociology makes small steps ahead, new contributions. And as it, it was pointed out by Dr. Swalehin also, that these domains need new research primarily, and especially in Indian context, because uh, if you see the global literature, you find that there are studies on social capital and health. We find few papers, few texts also in social capital and health. But in Indian context, these dimensions are actually unexplored. Uh, yesterday, I was trying to uh, find out whatever text which are available. Then I got to see that there is one text on caste and social capital. Sometimes we happen to see that a religion and social capital. That means people have been trying to explore these new dimensions. And simultaneously, we are also addressing the situations from the social health perspective, mental health perspective. Uh, I will consider the sociologist 
responsible for the lagging behind of the notion of social health because mental health as of now is a well developed concept the psychologist the psychiatric people have been working a lot on exploring the dimensions of mental health unfortunately we sociologists have not started to work rigorously on the notion of social health although who does talk about the importance of the social dimensions of health right so thank you very much and uh, now i would like to ask some of the participants to make their presentation as the course coordinator actually i have this tremendous burden of making this program as inclusive as possible and i am aware of the the disadvantages that some of the students are having but because the nature of this program is inclusive this program is mean to reach to those people who otherwise are basically who are not having access to this kind of program so uh, that is why i am trying to point out find out the names and ask them uh, by calling their names uh, i want two presenters from tamil nadu now all participants from tamil nadu who are listening me i want two comments to presentations from tamil nadu please whosoever is available here you make your presentation or at least you come forward unmute yourself introduce yourself tell us about your college whatever but i want two persons to comment otherwise i will start calling by name who is coming forward i'm sitting here with pen and paper if you are not unmuting yourself and not pointing out then that will go against you nobody coming forward hatham Atam Hussain, are you here? No response. You may call it a kind of attendance. I'm calling the names. You have to respond. Okay, Abdul Rahman, are you here? I'll mark you absent. I can see your name. Abdul Rahman, are you hearing me? Yeah, mute to me, you know. Mute. Ah, yeah, mute. Abdul Rahman is not responding. Abinesh. Abinesh, are you here? Ahmed Ali, Aparna. Good afternoon, sir. I'm here. Yeah, Aparna, would you like to make a brief comment on anything? Um, so I do not have a presentation. uh today just just a small comment right so um i'm actually i was really uh, engaged throughout because social capital is one of my um uh, areas of interest and uh, the the topic that i'm currently working on and why i was interested to be a part of the um uh, the course was i'm looking at how sort of um, religion helps or enables or even is counterproductive when it comes to coping mechanisms when people are undergoing uh, uh sort of challenges that come with uh, chronic diseases so that is my fundamental uh, research question that i am working on and how social capital plays a huge part so in communities for instance um which are resource deficit or 
which to, who do not have a, a large social capital often rely on indigenous indigenous healing systems or often rely on um, religious uh, practices to cope with the different kind of challenges that come with uh, um, you know going through something uh, going through a chronic disease in their family or in their community so that way sort of uh, today's session specifically was really helpful for me and uh, I, I, I hope to sort of uh, focus more on the questions when I, I, I do my assignment um, uh, that is being asked for the, for the course. But yeah, today's session was, was really helpful to help me brush my research question. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the comment that I want to make today. Thank you, Aparna. Please make your presentation tomorrow, right? Right, right. I'll do that. Okay. Alam Kir, are you here? Arangeshwar? Arangeshwar, are you here? See, I'm getting a very bad. Yes, Arangir. Uh, Arangeshwaran, Arangeshwaran. Please unmute yourself, Arangeshwaran. Sir? How many classes you have attended Arangeshwaran till now? Sir, uh, I, uh, I have attended all the class uh, sessions. Okay. Yes, sir. So please say thank you very much to the foreign faculty. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Say thank you, sir. Professor Mivako. Oh, Mivako, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry. Okay. Which which topic you liked the most out of all the topics that she presented? Um, from the first uh, first day, I like the topic about uh, equality and e equity. Okay, good. So write your name in the WhatsApp group, right? I want you to make a presentation tomorrow. Okay, sir. Okay. You write, write your name in the WhatsApp group. Then okay, sir. Kumar. Ashwin Kumar, are you here? Askar Fazil. Ayanarlu, Ayanarlu, are you here? Balakrishnan, I'm making all you people who are not responding absent, mind it. I'm calling the names, if you're not responding, I'm, I'll mark you absent. Balakrishnan, Deepak Kumar? Yes, sir. Please, Deepak Kumar, unmute yourself. And thank you to you, Dr. Mohammed Swalehin. Please respond. Where are you? Deepak Kumar, listening me? He's waiting over here. Deepak Kumar, unmute yourself and say a few words. We want to listen to you. There's no network issue. We will bear the network issue. Please unmute and respond. Deva S. Are you here, Deva S? Yes, sir. Ah, please say which topics you like the most. 
சார் ஆல் த டாபிக்ஸ் ஆர் இன்ட்ர இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் சார் பட் ஐ லைக் த பட் ஐ லைக் ஈக்குவல் அண்ட் ஈக்குவாலிட்டி மோஸ்ட் சார் ஓகே அண்ட் வாட் அபவுட் டுடேஸ் லெக்சர் விச் டாபிக் டுடே யூ லைக் த மோஸ்ட் Yes, we are listening you. Which topic you like the most today? The social patterning of health, sir. Was social patterning on health was not delivered today. That was delivered on the first day. Hello. Yes. Okay, Deva Kumar. Will you present your? Uh, are you preparing your assignment? no response dinesh dinesh are you here azil raj i don't know how to pronounce that azil raj gautam gautam j gautam j why you people are not responding i know all of you are hearing me this is not a formal class i'm not your class teacher this is an open course you joined it voluntarily why you people are not responding i am unable to understand i'm not your formal class teacher this is a open platform this is an open learning you are you have joined this course you send me email <laughs> okay start speaking come <laughs> on <laughs> please don't unmute mute yourself if you are not saying anything mute yourself Abdul Rahman mute yourself So Deva is not there Gautam is not there Guna Sekaran Guna Sekaran Akhtar you made your presentation yesterday Era Maslam you made your presentation yesterday Jahabuddin Jahabuddin you kept on sending me emails till the very last minute and that created plenty of an anxiety to me i could not sleep that very night because i had to settle all the participants you send me more than 50 messages jahabuddin respond please not responding kamal din anybody from aligarh who is here from amu or aligarh who is present in the class as of now yes sir yes sir okay yes sir please tell your yes, name sir please tell your name so myself dr eram sir okay dr eram you presented yesterday and umair khan sir <coughs> umair khan you presented yesterday and yes sir razi bani sir razi bani you presented yesterday and dr husain bhat dr husain you presented yesterday okay who is not here nusrat you uh, okay you asked the question to your supervisor you have you presented yesterday also if i presented yesterday farha uh, you are not well today it's like a school primary school teacher right that i am calling the names and children are not responding it not like a higher education platform where we join the program voluntarily <coughs> so in when 
I just two, three people responded despite making the best of efforts, right? Anyway, uh, uh, I would like to, uh, Uh, I would like to make a brief comment that, see, this is an open platform. The government has provided enough resources to conduct this program. This university faculty, the vice chancellor, the local coordinator, and we people are making enough efforts. The foreign faculty is ensuring her presence. For what? For whom? Is this just a personal communication between three, four of us? No, it is not. This is for all of us. This is basically an inclusive system, right? So if you are not prepared mentally to make this kind of presentation, then my humble request to you and suggestion to you is this, that you prepare yourself, right? We have two more days, tomorrow and day after tomorrow, right? Prepare yourself mentally. Just write a two-minute presentation, three-minute presentation. Say that, sir, I want to make a presentation. If you are not in a position to speak instantly, then just prepare a note, read out. But you come forward. You present your things. You share your ideas. This is how we all learn, right? This is the learning platform, OK? If you understood my message, write yes in the chat box. I want 80 yes in the chat box. Let us see if you can do this much of activity or not. I want to see 80 yes, right? Because learning means some sort of activity, right? Some kind of engagement, some kind of involvement, at mental level, at physical level. Otherwise, we don't learn. Professor Miwako has presented so many things. Just think of how much time she has devoted in preparing the slides. Can you think of? It takes time, it takes energy. And then only basically we prepare ourselves. Then only we make ourselves presentable. This is the time to learn new ideas, new skills, new things, right? So with these notes, uh, I don't know what to say next because I was expecting four or five. I had expected four or five presentations, but unfortunately, we could not have those presentations. We tried our best to engage, to activate the participants, but miserably failed. Uh, Dr. Swalain, would you want to make some comment? Otherwise, we will go to Professor Miwako, and then we will, in the next 10 minutes, we will close the session. I would say that. Uh, Sir. It's really very engaging uh, interaction and uh, I must appreciate the resource person who is really putting all the efforts, but this is uh, depressing. The participants are not taking active participation. So I uh, look forward to have more participation from the participants so that we can have more productive engagement. And again, um, I am literally uh, very uh, thankful to the resource person, Professor Mibako Hoseda. Thank you very much. Okay, somebody was saying yes. Uh, before you coming to you, ma'am, somebody was saying yes. Who was saying yes? Uh, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, uh, what I wanted to say was uh, uh, on the first day when we had the presentation, it was very interesting to note that uh, we all live on the same planet, but some societies give importance to the health of fellow human beings. And in some countries, they think it is a responsibility of the country to provide the uh, uh, health or that uh, or that services to every fellow human being. But in some societies, it depends on how much. Your voice is breaking. There is connectivity issue. Uh, who is speaking? Tej? Uh, sir, I'm Tej, sir. Yeah, yes, Tej, sir. can you repeat? We couldn't get what you, what, what you say. Uh, sir, am I audible now, sir? Yeah, yeah, you are audible now, please. There is some internet issue. 
you have a connectivity issue, please. Please, please type in the chat box, Tez. We cannot hear you. Right, please. Right, right, sir. Please. So now we, uh, we are going to Professor Mimo. Okay, thank you very much for, yeah, again. <laughs> and uh, I also ran a lot from you. And I'm really sorry I couldn't, I cannot attend the next three, the uh, next two, two days, um, 17th and 18th, because my, uh, I have my uh, obligation in my university. However, I am really, um, you know, appreciate you, yeah, especially <laughs> Professor Akram and the all participants and the faculty member of the sociology of department in Arga Muslim University. It is a great opportunity for me to, to view the different uh, the aspect and the different uh, the world in the health, public health area. You know, we have many common uh, challenges and also um, we have a different healthcare system and the cultural norm. However, uh, if we can run uh, each other and take the, you know, the positive and supportive uh, way for people to protect the health and to promote the health. So it, I'm, wishing, I'm really hoping to uh, continue to our academic relationship and uh, someday, if possible, we can make a, you know, the collaborative research on the public health and the sociology of health. Yeah, so thank you yeah. very much. Please keep in touch. Sure, ma'am. We will uh, make positive efforts to develop some collaborative work, right? That is one of the goals of this program also. And it was also outlined during the inaugural session by the local coordinator. So we'll work in that direction just after completion of the formalities related to this program, right? So hope to get your continuous support for these academic endeavors, ma'am. So heartiest thanks to you, right? And uh, I'll send you a detailed email. We have to settle certain formalities. So we will do those things, okay? So thank you very much. Now we are in the session. Uh, is there... Uh, is there anybody who is interested in making any comment? I can, I can give you 10 seconds to respond. If you are interested, please respond. Otherwise, we'll close the session. Okay, please give So maybe, uh, so my suggestion is to <laughs> Uh, yes. I just I want to suggest to make a group picture with the screen. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So everybody who is present, please, please keep your videos on for 30 seconds so that we can have a group picture. That is one of the requirements also. Everybody who is present, please. Keep your video open. That is very good to see the face for Please. every participant. So almost is that all? More. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And that is great. So, uh, Professor Akram, please, uh, you know, move 
in front of the camera. <laughs> Everybody is ready? And Professor Akram, please come in front of the camera. I'm just coming, just coming. Now. He's just coming. Okay. So I'll make a screenshot or you, you can do it. Just in case, both of us. Okay. So uh, the smile. <laughs> Everybody smile, big smile. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So, please share the photograph. Yes, I share it with chat box. Okay. Well, second. Okay, now we are closing the session. Actually, I'm sorry, I don't have uh, the function of uh, of the in the attachment. Let me ah here, not here. This one? Now we are closing the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So anyway, I will send uh, the, my, you know, the, the picture, the group picture to the Professor Akram. So Professor Akram will be distributed to you. Is it okay? Oh. 